What's happening guys, Silent Mike checking in another video where I'm gonna hopefully help and fix your guys' bench press forms, but a few things to cover first. First off, I got 25% off everything in my Reebok store. All you guys have to do is click the first link in the description uh, below, and then use code, capital letters, Mike October. This code is 25% off everything on the website, and it's only good until Wednesday, so take advantage of that. Uh, number two announcement is that I am dropping a video now. The schedule has changed every other day. So uh, for those that are missing it, be sure to subscribe, turn on the bell, turn on the notifications, give this video a thumbs up. Let's get after it. I do appreciate you guys, but it seems like we're still having subscription and box errors where my videos aren't popping up and it makes me so, so sad because I'm working so hard. Um, but so be sure to turn on the notification, not miss a video. My man on the bench press. So <clears throat> General form actually looks really, really solid. So with the bench press, we have two main rules. Um, uh, different federations, some you'll need to keep your head on the bench and heels on the ground. Others, you can lift your head and you can also be on your toes. Uh, for my man right here, the only one thing I would say is watch that elbow position as you drop the bar down into your chest. I did a video on bench heaving uh, months ago. And heaving... Um, as long as the bar does come to rest and you go upwards only from the pause com or the press command is totally legal. But what I'd like to see is you tuck those elbows or bring that barbell touch a little bit higher. I want those elbows underneath. You can see a slight rotation of the shoulder underneath uh, when you pause and the elbows are going behind the bar. Uh, that's going to put excess pressure on the shoulder. You're losing tightness down there. Uh, similar for my man right here. It looks like you're just losing a little bit of tightness. So a pause on the chest does not mean that we're letting it fall into us and losing our back tightness. So what we need to do is make sure our shoulders are squeezed the entire time. A lift off is going to help with this. So we're squeezing our shoulder blades together and down, kind of shrugging backwards and down, getting our shoulders as far away from our ears as we can. Another thing that might help you, my man, is moving your grip out a bit. So shoulders tight, together, down, getting that sternum as high as you can and not letting that weight plop down. So one... Um, pausing under control and think about rowing that bar into you that'll keep that back tight and uh, control on your chest another thing is called the spoto press where you're pausing or just not touching about an inch off your chest um, and when eric spoto uh, obviously who it's named after uh, would train what he would basically do is all his reps this way and he would be so tight that the bar would almost just hover off his chest and he could pump them out over and over and over uh, there's a couple other things we can clean up, but I wouldn't focus too much on the other things. Um, your legs are a little uneven, so make sure those are even. Move that grip out just a hair, uh, and make sure that the weight is in your palms. Um, I know there's some discussion about where, you know, perfectly neutral wrist or wrist cock back a little bit. Be wrist cock back or wrist neutral isn't as important as where the bar is sitting in your hands. If this bar is sitting high in your hands and your wrists are cocked back, now you're going to have an issue because that bar is well behind your elbows and your shoulders, the main mover. So we need it in the palm of your hand. Uh, elbows cocked back a little bit there is just fine. Moving on to bench presser number three. I like the style of the gym we're in right now, though. Old school bench, old school plates. Looks like uh, maybe not here. I'm trying to read. Yeah, we're in kilos. Long ass setup, not a big deal. Really, really solid. Uh, so again, this bench is kind of a commercial style bench, so it may be a little low. Uh, what we're looking for with our legs to be tight is flexing our quads, pushing our foot into the front, um, pushing into our toes, as well as forcing our knees out and flexing our glutes. Uh, and then you want your knees below your hips. That'll make sure that you're driving yourself back onto your traps. Uh, with a shorter bench like this, it's kind of hard to do, so I bet on a taller bench would be okay. Uh, the only other suggestion I would say is with this exact form, one, we always want to lift off. It's not being a sissy. It's not being anything like that. It's going to save our our shoulders over time it also allows us to keep our back as tight as possible uh, the other thing is i'd say with you my friend right here is that you might be able to move your grip out a little bit um, there's nothing wrong with the grip you have right now uh, but it looks like you have longer arms and you have a decent little arch going on we can talk about arch another day um, but what that will allow you to do is obviously reduce the range of motion but i think your elbows will be in a slightly better place with a little bit wider grip even right there, it just looks slightly uncomfortable uh, to me. And then when you're tucking your elbows, you're touching so low. Rather than you could touch a little bit higher and move that grip out. I can't see where your uh, fingers are on the rings, but it looks like maybe ring finger on the rings. Uh, I would try a middle finger, a pointer on the rings. Give it a shot four to six weeks. Again, guys, remember with all these cues, four to six weeks, uh, and we'll be good to go. The reason I say this is uh, uh, as you go progress through the set and you're not tucking your elbows 
as much, uh, they're outside of your wrist. And anytime our elbow's outside of our wrist, it becomes more of a tricep extension. Uh, and obviously that's an exaggeration, but it becomes more of an extension than it does a press. What we'd rather have is our um, worst case is wrists outside of our uh, elbows or perfectly stacked on top of each other, uh, depending on many other factors on how you're built. So um, again, legs are good. They look pretty tight. You look pretty sturdy. Nice big breath. Um, bar path is actually really good. When we're looking for our bar path, guys, uh, there's a lot of different surveys and opinions on this. Um, but majority of the time, all I say is press backwards and up. You don't want to press the bar in a straight line. This is the only lift that we don't want a straight bar path. We want it back towards the rack. So I, I suggest people pause and then think about pressing back towards the rack right off of their chest. Oh, that's slow-mo wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Um, but besides that, uh, everything looks really, really solid. Wrists are in a good position. Uh, it looks like your shoulders are tight. Uh, I guess we have time now to talk about the arch. The arch, guys, what, basically all we're trying to do, again, is get that back as tight as we can. Uh, if you can get a little bit of an arch, it's not a big deal because the load is coming straight down. It's not on our spine. It's not the same as having an arch during a squat or a deadlift uh, because of where the load is placed. Uh, it'll allow you to, one, reduce the range of motion, and two, if your back is tight with the arch, which just because you have an arch doesn't mean your back is tight, we want those shoulder blades pinched together and down with a bit of an arch will allow us to use our back uh, and keep that midline strong as well as protect our shoulders. Our elbows won't go as far past our body uh, if we have a bit of an arch and a tight back. If we're flat backed and we don't tighten our shoulders, um, then what will happen is our elbows will go much further past our body in that bottom position, and that puts an extreme amount of stress on our shoulders and our pecs. So what we'll do is, again, tighten those shoulders, chest up, and then it fixes both of those issues in the arch. So there's your arch talk. It's not dangerous um, in the bench press. Pretty solid here, my man. Um, what I'd say is we need to control that weight on the way down. Uh, it looks like you're just dropping it and then trying to catch it. Uh, and what I'd suggest for you is something like a tempo bench to get used to that. So if you have a gym partner or even in your head, count anywhere from three to five seconds on the way down, controlling the weight, barely touch your chest, and then another three to five seconds on the way up. For many people, as if you're paying attention to it as well, this will get your proper um, tightness throughout the entire press. And then you can speed it up over time. Uh, every session you guys go into, uh, beginner, intermediate, advanced, whatever, uh, you should have sets, reps, and load, or RPE, uh, prescribed that you're trying to hit in that session. Uh, and then beyond that, you should have a cue or two that you really want to fix in your bench press to get better. All right, my man, this is a real good angle, angle to see um, that we're not getting our shoulders that tight. So you can see your front of your delt right there, the front of your shoulders is moving a lot. You can see it's totally untucked. Um, and this is the example, as I said, is having an arch or a flat back opposed to just getting a tight back. So well, all we need to focus on first is if you stand up or as you set up on the bench, pinch those shoulder blades tight together behind you, like you're doing a row, like the bottom part of a row. And that's where you're gonna press from. Your shoulder itself, will take load in this uh, and move weight, no doubt. It is a mover, but it doesn't need to actually physically move itself. We want it tucked in in our arms to do the moving. This will keep us safest, um, allow us to train the most amount of volume, the most amount of weight, and lift the most amount of weight. You can see here that my man has a little bit of an arch, and it looks like his back's almost tight. Uh, again, those aren't exclusive. When people have an arch, it doesn't mean their back is tight. It's actually um, a mis common mistake I see all the time is people are focusing on their arch when they should be focusing on a tighter, squeezed shoulders. Uh, it looks like your wrists are fairly cocked back right there. And from that angle, it almost looks like your elbows uh, end up way behind the bar. Uh, which they do a little bit. So uh, again, I, I, I prescribe something, um, probably like a, a tempo bench or even a spoto. And for you, my friend, I would suggest moving your grip in just a hair. It looks like you're losing tightness in the last three inches of the bench on the way down, and you just kind of let it flop and that shoulder rotate in a little bit. So we need to squeeze those shoulders a little bit tighter. Using your legs, uh, a little extra oomph on the way up is just fine, uh, but not at the stake that our shoulders are going to be in a compromised position. So you can see your elbows float back a little bit, which is telling me your shoulders are rotating. And the weight on the way down, uh, both the squat and the bench, it should move at the same speed. We shouldn't be accelerating into the hole or accelerating into a pause. You can go fast. Um, again, be quick, but don't hurry. This is a little bit better example of being quick, but it looks like he's tight and under control. Um, Another thing I would suggest right here, my man, is you need to change that bar path a little bit. It looks like you're pressing a little bit straight. So off that chest, I'd suggest you press it back towards the rack. 
It'll feel weird at first, but over time, the bar speed will be, uh, be much increased and you'll lift a lot more weight. Setup looks pretty decent. Shoulders are a little exposed, but it looks like you get them a little bit tighter there. That back's tight on the unrack. What I would suggest is trying to get that back tight before the unrack and then maintain it the entire time. Legs look fine. You see the knees below the hip. The knees are forced out as well as the quads flexed. The only thing I'd say is maybe a slightly wider grip and then also off that chest, we really need to start pressing backwards, not straight up towards the ceiling. Press up and back. Um, it's hard to show with you guys benching, but that's kind of the same cue or technique is bending the bar on the way down to get our elbows underneath the bar if not just in front and then on the way up I'm pressing it back towards my eye line and I'm unfolding that bar or I'm slightly flaring my elbows one that'll allow my elbows to stay in the proper place underneath the barbell the whole time and two when performed correctly it'll allow you to press in the proper arc backwards um, some people will call it a squiggle or an arc but just off your chest sometimes the bar moves backwards towards you and then straight up and other times it's a clean arc thumbs up Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I appreciate you guys. I'm out of here.